Hello, Gord Holden here. I'm coming to you from a build in the Active Worlds EDU platform. This 3D interactive virtual learning platform offers much, much more than any other environment. But if you're new to all this, perhaps we should start from the beginning. We could spend the next 30 minutes talking about all the advantages and disadvantages of the various platforms. But let me just take you to the current gold standard for interactive educational platforms. Welcome to Quest Atlantis. I've brought you here in the middle of the night to avoid the busyness of this virtual hub during the waking hours of any day of the week. I'd like your introduction to QA to begin with giving you a rudimentary sense of the care and research that went into crafting this resource. Using a teleport crystal to access one of many, many worlds available, we'll go to a teacher world where teachers receive a portion of their required training. The non-playing characters inhabiting these worlds are like Tumnus the Fawn in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the difference being that these NPCs offer opportunities for decisions that make the learning dynamic, complex, personal, and experiential rather than rote. Of primary importance is that this moderated environment remains a place where everyone remains safe and respected. All students engage in introductory missions that make the eyeburst rules clear. Failure to comply can result in students' participation being restricted, precluding the ability to interact with other questers. The shard flower on the wall is like the one behind my head. It represents the first key lesson of the good gaming, the ability to level up to gain status. The second key to making a successful game is a vibrant backstory. Quest Atlantis has this as well. There once was a world called Atlantis, a beautiful blue-green world, a world of forests, mountains, and silver cities. The Learning Sciences Department at Indiana University noted that while learning was a natural dynamic of childhood, it's supercharged when linked with playing and helping. And so the quests, missions, and units support the following social commitments, environmental awareness, creative expression, diversity affirmation, healthy communities, personal agency, compassionate wisdom, and social responsibility. Completed assignments may demonstrate understanding of concepts across math, science, socials, etc. But more importantly, besides earning the lumens that will light up their shard flowers and coals for purchasing things in Quest Atlantis, students know that they are learning how to be assets in their real-life world. Hundreds of these quests, missions, and units are available to be assigned to various classes or groupings through the teacher toolkit, but to qualify for inclusion with QA, each of these assignments must embrace three aspects. Intentionality, in other words, is this lesson important to the students? Legitimacy, is the learning contextualized in a way that makes it relevant for the students and consequentiality? Are students able to see and learn from the results of their decisions? One of the burning questions for parents is about whether or not all QA assignments are virtual. While many, of course, are, many are not. Many of the available assignments require students to get their hands dirty with experiments, to conduct interviews, and to make observations in real life. Here in Emissary Island, you'll see a great example of how QA exploits Bruner's viewpoint. The play is intended to give children opportunities to explore real life dynamics without the stress of real life. In the village, we find a trading post where students can make purchases and take on jobs within QA. There's also a gathering place, a working post office, security center, coffee shop, travel center, and even a bank where children can invest their coals in low-risk and high-risk investments. When we take a look at the materials provided by QA, we also see that the scaffolding is not restricted to keyboarding. Note-taking is an important aspect of this program as well. No, uh, you're not in Kansas anymore, or QA. The experience of Quest Atlantis inspired me to go and get our own virtual worlds. This world is a muskamak, 
originally a World War II First Nations brothers from northern Vancouver Island, rebuilt their ancestral village to preserve their language, culture, and history. We have that saved, but currently use this world for our classrooms. Now given that I'm teaching Humanities 8, my classroom includes a museum for historical artifacts, student message boards, an office where I can meet and talk with students, and cubicles where students can access recordings of the class or classes that they missed. At the control panel, I can access a number of different buttons, turn out the lights, access various pictures that I can preload, easy to do. I can also create my own web pages to bring up and these can involve class notes, uh, videos, uh, pretty much anything that I want I can put up on the board and have it live, including web pages that are interactive as well. So here's our school web page and of course I can uh, click on any of these things and make them live and as well as so can the students. So the interaction that can take place here is really very dynamic, uh, including uh, voice has an onboard vibe, um, VoIP system that allows us to talk to each other no matter where we might teleport to, in this case having teleported to Rome. Back in the classroom now I'm going to teleport us to one of our original builds, the first one, it's called Via Moose, short for Virtual Antiquities Museum. Uh, this is my office. Now I noted that uh, I didn't have enough seats for all the students that I wanted to be sharing stuff with. I mentioned that to the, the boy who was in the cubicle to the left. This was a student that was really reticent about schooling totally, but he came to me and said, Mr. Holden, you'll be back in a couple hours. I said yes. He said, well, come and see me when you're back. And he bought me into this room that he created. And for me, he created a total um, virtual classroom in which you can do pretty much anything that you want to do. It's fully functional. There's not really much difference between having an actual classroom and having this. Here's a video to watch. Excuse me.
taking you now to a classroom in a language world for another recording. Many students learn best through exploring and discovery. By restricting them to a predetermined course, we leech the adventure out of learning and set them on a path that leads to a dead end. They need us to restore the excitement of learning, to unlock the doors. At Heritage Christian Online School, we do that. Now I'd like to point out that this is just the tip of the iceberg as to the resources that we use and the things that we're able to do using virtual worlds. It's up to you whether you want to see uh, a tour of this particular world, but it has everything in it that one can imagine and shows you the possibilities. We're just going to go outside of the fully operational school and uh, take a bus ride down the street. And as we go down the street, riding the bus, we'll see rec center on the right, along with a city hall, a banking system, uh, stables for horses. To the left, we have a fire department, police department. We have a uh, wonderful art gallery showing impressionistic art, a Chinese restaurant, Japanese restaurant, a winery, general store, the gas station to the left at the end of the street, and to the right, uh, the Heritage Museum. Uh, in this particular build, um, I'm enabled to fly, so I'm going to fly up over the barriers that we have to a recreational area. You'll see that area behind the baseball stadium. And uh, there's also a hockey arena that you won't get to see, but you can skate around in the hockey arena. You can participate in water sports. Uh, over to the right, you'll see that there's a, a, a lake and a, a river. Uh, so they have speed boats and water skiing and all those kinds of things that you might want to explore using French. So we come to this ski hill, there's a working gondola that took you up to the top. Uh, much of what you see at the top was built by the students. Uh, they have created a lodge in which they can do things like karaoke. To the right, there's a, uh, a challenging bike course that goes up to the top where you can take gliders. Uh, down below, a racing course where the students can race each other. There's also a theme park, um, African wild animals, uh, North American uh, animals as well. You'll see we're coming up on... Um, an aquarium and in the aquarium you can actually change into scuba gear and go swimming with the sharks. Uh, there's an aviary as well to learn about um, birds. Uh, as we go to the left we'll see that there's an, an operational airport. Also uh, it'll res a little bit here you can see the mall just off to the left which has everything that one can imagine in any kind of mall. We have uh, theater, outdoor theaters, indoor theaters. We have bowling alleys. We have a nuclear power plant. We have uh, coal mining and uh, ca caverns and secret societies uh, meeting. We have uh, a 50s restaurant. You're going to see it coming up to the left. And in the uh, very background, you'll see some houses will pop up. And these houses belong to the students. They're able to furnish it according to what they like to have in it the only prerequisite being that they can identify it in French. They can dance in the 50s restaurant or they can go to the movie theater and watch a commercial movie that we can put in there for them. There are playgrounds and parks. You can see there's a subway system to the left. Uh, so not only are there taxis that you can take and um, vehicles that you can ride around the city, because it's quite large, but uh, there's also the subway system that takes you underneath, fully functional. There are doctor's office, dentists, there are places uh, to buy drugs uh, at drugstores, there's a Catholic church, there is, a, this is a traditional kind of uh, Quebecois city center that has all the patisseries and uh, different stores that you can imagine including a fine French restaurant. So I haven't even begun to get into what we do with Unity 3D. Perhaps that's another story for another time. It seems to me that my time is up. I had about 15 minutes. So thank you very much for your attention to this recording. I hope you enjoyed it.